What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Racially Speaking. I'm your host, David Phipps, and it's uh, just me today. Um, look, this is going to be a little shorter than usual. I haven't done one of these solo episodes in a while, but I, uh, I wanted to jump on just briefly and give some thoughts on what's been going on with the presidential election. So the election's a long way off. Obviously, it's in, in November, but um, a lot's been going on, and you guys don't come to me for your political um, advice or political commentary. At least you shouldn't. There's plenty more other places you should be checking out instead of me, but if you listen to this podcast, you do come to me and John Mark and our guests for thoughts on the racial dynamics about any given story, whether it's in the news, entertainment, um, in the church, um, or whatnot. And we always try and have honest, real dialogue about racial issues. And um, I encourage you to listen to the first episode of 2024 that we just put out last week, and we kind of unpack a little bit more about why we even do this podcast and why we started it and why we're going to keep doing it. Um, so racially speaking, there's there's just a lot to talk about if you've been following anything that has to do with the presidential race. And so I'm going to camp out there as, as I always do. And um, hopefully it was made clear in that last episode and every episode. The, the point of this podcast is not to make everything about race, but rather to be faithful and willing to talk about the racial elements that are at play in any given story or situation that just aren't honestly talked about and so that's kind of the heart behind what I'm doing on this episode and really really any episode because we we believe it's important and too often the racial elements are diminished and not honestly talked about um when when they should be and people's lives are deeply affected by that so okay enough kind of of the uh, introduction and pleasantries again i just wanted to focus on bare bones and there's plenty other elements at play as you're following along if you're following along politics and the presidential election and potential candidates so bare bones um i really just wanted to camp out with the racial elements not because they they are now i do believe they are a huge part of all this but you know, I'll say not the only thing you should consider. So don't, you know, come at me and hear me or claim that I only care about race, but that's what this conversation and the conversations on this podcast are about. So first, I mentioned this towards the end of the last episode, but um, I, I thought this was kind of common knowledge, and I don't mean that in a um, condescending way, but The more I talk to people, the more I realize it's not. But um, look, guys, former president Donald Trump is, if you look at the polls and projections right now, as I'm sitting here, is the most likely person to be our next president. And so I'm not going to unpack all of what that means, even just racially speaking, I'm not going to unpack what that means. Other than that's staggering to me. That is saying it's cause for concern is putting it ever so too lightly. And it, it's stuff like that that I think has gotten a lot of people in marginalized communities in a very cynical place. I'm often one of them. Um, not meaning that I don't have hope, but I'm around a lot of conversations where people, I think, want to say, well, things have changed. We've moved on from 2020. Things have gotten better. That's the worst it's going to get. And I'm not going to be all doom and gloom, but I'm also not going to say that that's true. And case in point, um, the fact that our system, our government, and more so to me personally, that um, the same people that put this man in the White House are largely, not all, 
been largely by the numbers. The same people that are have supported him in in an unwavering manner, and are and the hill they're gonna die on is that they want him back. It is extremely troubling to me knowing how he unequivocally treats um, the marginalized. So that's one, racially speaking, um, very negative thing in my opinion to embrace as reality so that that's happening and i mentioned the system i'm not a government or you know law expert by any means but isn't there something wrong with how our system works that um somebody could potentially be president even though he's being prosecuted for so many crimes at the same time and it's not just that but you know if you haven't followed he's you know, he's being litigated and prosecuted in every which way um disgusting horrible crimes at every level um sexual assault allegations um financial crimes um international i believe just just all up and down and people are unwaveringly supporting him i'm not trying to say the other side is that there's some high moral ground on on the other side but i'm just saying it's staggering to me and it's troubling and more so um i think some people might think that if he were to be found guilty of these crimes and sentenced uh, let's just say he was the safest place for him would be in the white house um look it up don't take my word for it but he's uh, there's laws in place and please if you know more about this than i do please reach out and educate me so I can educate people. Um, but he he could be part of his motivation and people's, his supporters' motivation is that they want him to get in the White House to keep him out of jail. At the very least, at least for the four years he would be in the White House. So that's troubling, very troubling to me. Um, to Regardless of what happens with him legally, um, criminally, being in the White House keeps him safe from that or from the ramifications so that that's all i'm gonna say about trump right now i'm sure i'll have to mention him a f- you know a few more times this year i try my best not to to be honest um but racially speaking on the other side and as i'm recording this um just yesterday this this did change a little bit but racially speaking okay I think we're in a really bad spot. And let's just take um, Republican candidates. So um, before yesterday, the other two possibilities, people that were running and challenging Trump for the um, for the primary spot as the Republican representative in this next pres- presidential election were Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida and Nikki Haley of South Carolina. Okay, We've mentioned them a few times on here. Again, racially speaking, um, as I've been following things... Actually, let me take a step back for a second. So, Nikki Haley. I don't agree with the majority of things she says. I think stuff she has said about the marginalized um, are and history, especially lately, are very, very troubling. I think a few times I've heard her speak and answer questions... Which most questions in these debates aren't aren't great. Um, they are uh, often very leading. Um, but I've liked, and the bar's low. But I've thought that how she's answered questions about some really difficult things has actually been decent, in my opinion. I, I mean that wholeheartedly, in my opinion. Um, I, I think they've been decent with how she has said both sides could work together with with certain issues. Um, so that's been interesting to me. I'm not saying that's not an endorsement by any means, but that's been interesting because what I'm about to say, uh, it's hard for a lot of that not to go out the window. And what I mean is just recently she's gotten in some hot water, and, and I just think rightfully so. Um, if you remember a few months ago, she was trying to get support for her role in the fact that she was deeply moved at some point when a shooting in South Carolina happened. I believe it might have been the one of the Charleston church. It was an anniversary. 
at the uh, AME church and um she she took that as a wake up call to help get the confederate flag taken down at one of the courthouses I believe or municipal buildings she wanted that as kind of a pat on her back to say look I've worked against that's me working against eradicating racism okay that's fine I, I didn't think that was that amazing but let's just give that to her now fast forward within this last couple of weeks or month she has then gone on to say that the civil war was never about slavery it was about states rights when we all know well, maybe we don't all know but how disingenuine that is that what's actually being left out is states rights to what own slaves and you know if, if you look this up um, you can actually see me pull it up and read some of it but you can actually see what um why South Carolina where South Carolina stood back during this time um and it, it, you, can, you can read it and it's specifically about not wanting to succumb to giving up slavery okay so that so it's, it's just it's not factual it's completely uh wrong is the point I'm trying to make here um, her own her own state is against was against during the Civil War eradicating slavery like that is actually what is in writing what they believed um, can't find the whole thing right now but I'll try and uh, repost it and come back to that um on our Patreon page or on our social media, but they, anyway, plenty of people have said the same thing, so Nikki Haley's not the only one, so anyway, and then just this past week has been one to, or was asked, do you work, referring to the Republican Party, is your party racist? Very, again, very leading question, not a good question, very leading question. But it also should have been a softball to answer in a much different way than she answered. And she answered by saying, no. No, we're not a racist party. Which is, which, let's just give her the benefit of the doubt. That's fine to say, even if you disagree. But then she went on to say and double down and triple down and say, this country is not racist. This country has never been racist. Okay, fundamentally wrong. Fundamentally wrong. Um, and moved on to say that we're just here now, here and now, trying to make one day better, or the next day better, today better than yesterday, and the next day better, and the next day better. So, to me, having the mentality of just moving on, making the next day better, next day better, next day better, you're referring to something, you're, you're obviously sidestepping something that you don't want to talk about that's in the past, and two, to, it's just a fundamental denial of something like slavery and our, the history of racism. You'll pick, pick, pick which one. Um, I'm currently reading the story of Yuri Kochiyama, who did a lot of work with um, activism and for Japanese Americans and um, worked with Malcolm X and her family's experience post-World War II and um, Pearl Harbor with Japanese internment camps. Okay. So many different things. Um, just fundamentally wrong. And then she also, you know, went on to say, of course, to get this um, feather in her cap. Um, mentioned how her she experienced racism herself growing up. So I, I get maybe she's saying that was an individual experience. Our country's not racist, but that was my experience. So uh, to me, yeah, yeah, it's one of those classic in, just in genuine wanting it both ways, but not wanting to... Um, to come to one way or the other very political politically motivated you know claim okay and she's still in the race but as of yesterday at the day i'm recording this um ron DeSantis, who again i'm not going to unpack very much right now but 
is like the face of like his platform more than anybody more than trump more than anybody is anti-woke anti-dei um his whole thing is his whole platform essentially is on racism um they just in florida passed um a bill that makes it even that i think outlaws permanently which i don't know how it's permanent because it seems like anything can get overtaken now but makes it so it's illegal to use funds in higher education for dei um which they're already on their way to doing that, but I think it's across the board now, not just in, maybe it's just not in private universities, but moving the needle more and more towards no DEI, no DEI, no affirmative action, um, and whatnot. And he he was um, still vying for the Republican nomination, but has since dropped out and supported Trump, even though Trump and DeSantis have gone back and forth for this last year to just yeah, like rivals hating each other, but I get it, politics, but... Anyway, I, I believe if Nikki Haley were to drop out, she would probably also endorse Trump. Um, but anyway, so across the board, these three even, and I didn't even pack anybody else that's been in the race. Um, concerning, racially speaking, with people leading the country. I mean, two of these people already lead their states, um, which I think is, is a great way reason to look and say hey we shouldn't be surprised if one of these is in the white house you know maybe one will be vice president and that the country is starting to run be run in the way that south carolina and florida are run um and also taking them out of the equation regardless who runs with trump there's absolutely no reason to be surprised of how trump runs things now um, okay, I, I don't want to go down too many tangents. Racially speaking, very, very, very concerning. And of course, the other side, we've got Joe Biden staying in um, in the race and running. And I think support for Trump was always there, but I think support for him has increased because of how critical people are being, of how uh, President Biden has navigated the conflict in Israel or in Gaza. In support for Israel and so I'll probably do more on that in a different episode but uh, yeah. that's also fair and I think that he should be criticized a lot for some things but I think there are, are is a lot of nuanced conversation that needs to be had about what what's going on what that means if you've turned on voting for Biden or the Democratic Party this isn't an endorsement for either side in this conversation because I think these things just need to be talked about Um, again I'll quote Eugene Cho I think politics matter because um, politicians or policies affect people people's lives and I say it all the time justice matters are or justice issues are life and death and it doesn't that might not be so obvious at certain times it's more obvious at other times than it is at other times it's obvious at certain times than it is at others. Um, so, look, racially speaking, I've said that a bunch, I know. As you listen to this podcast, please be aware of these things that are all at play. Um, I promise these, um, I'm not looking for topics to talk about. Um, almost when I'm doing these episodes, it's because I feel like I can't, it's disingenuous to not address these glaring Uh, racial issues and just move on to different topics and so you know if you're a listener of this a regular listener of this podcast hopefully this is helpful and I encourage you to please as you are following the election or following these bigger stories that you would understand what's happening with some of these um, racial issues racially speaking um, during some of these things that's all I got today Um, hopefully this is helpful We hope to get more conversations out to you guys um, next month. Um, Maybe maybe even we'll fit in one more this month. We'll see. But hopefully this is helpful. And um, I appreciate you guys listening. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for listening. And also thank you guys for tuning in on YouTube if that's you. Bye.